to Bishop Trimble, the family and friends of those we are honoring today, my colleagues in ministry, and to the laity of the Indiana Conference of the United Methodist Church, greeting you. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We praise you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy to be praised. And Lord, as we gather together today to celebrate the lives of those that we are honoring, God, we thank you for their lives. We trust that you will come in all your glory through the power of your Holy Spirit to enlighten us to your truth, but also, Lord, to comfort us as we grieve. And now as I speak, I pray, God, that you will anoint the words of my mouth, that I would stand not in front of the cross, but behind it. And Lord Jesus, that you would be seen. I trust and pray, God, that you'll do this. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look forward to our lives, I remember a time when I was much younger, I would be like I was standing on the bow of a ship, looking forward and the sun is coming up and I was wondering, who will I be? What will I accomplish? What lofty goals that I have will come to fruition? And as I stood in that bow, I realized that it's all about, for me, all about doing, all about doing. But it would be much better if we stood in the stern of that boat instead of the bow. In Proverbs 13, 22, we read, the good leave an inheritance to their children's children. So we're to be about leaving an inheritance. And Proverbs isn't talking about money and property. Proverbs 13 is talking about what we invest in people that carry on, that are influenced, that are touched and transformed because of our lives. Scripture that means, as a special place in my heart, is Exodus 20, 4 through 6, where we read, You shall not make for yourselves an idol. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. So you might say, why, why, Dave, why is that so special to you? Well, 55 years ago, my dad read those words. And he said, it's going to end in my generation. What was going to end? My dad's family tree was full of conflict. My dad's dad committed suicide when my dad was 17. Family members against family members, discord. But my dad said, it's going to end in this generation. So my two brothers and sisters, as we move forward, it has ended. We love each other. We get along. There isn't any animosity between us. And because of that decision, I believe this is what has happened. Because I can look at other brothers, other family members, and see what happened in their family line. But in our family line, there are, th there are three pastors. Three pastors who are grandchildren, plus yours truly, four. And the rest of the family diligently, wholeheartedly, serves Jesus in a lay role by my dad saying and my dad moving forward and saying it's going to end in this generation. My dad has left a generation that will go on for a thousand generations. And as we honor those today, what they invested in your life or the lives of countless others, it just doesn't end with them. It goes on and on and on, making a difference for God. So stand in the, in the stern of the boat, not the bow, and look back. Look back. How long was their wake? How wide was their wake? How long and how wide will your wake be? 
the writer of Ecclesiastes was right. He said it was better to be in the house of mourning than the house of pleasure because death is the end for all of us. And the point was to look at what you will be leaving behind the legacy, the countless others, the people that you and I will invest in whose lives will be transformed. And as we think about those we're honoring today, think about the lives that have been transformed. Think about the love that they have for you. There's a picture, a picture that hangs on my wall. And that picture is called Welcoming Home by Danny Holgram. And in that picture, and it's hung on my wall for 30 years, is a picture of Jesus welcoming a person home. And, and I heard from Revelations 14, 13, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors for their deeds follow them. And today, as you reflect upon those who are honoring, your loved ones, your friend. I can hear the voice of Jesus saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. But as we celebrate, we also grieve. C.S. Lewis in his book, A Grief Observed, a book he penned right after the death of his wife joy he writes these words the pain i feel now is the happiness i had before that's the deal that's the deal so what lewis is saying is the reason why i'm in pain is because the person who's no longer here brought me great happiness joy they love me i love them and if there's no love then there's no pain if there's no joy, there's no pain. And so if you look at grief, and you look at the pain of sadness, of departing, and you look at it in the light of, this is what I'm feeling today, the pain, is because of the joy, the love I had for that person, and I received from that person. If you redirect yourself to that, that in itself will help bring healing I hear people say, don't cry at my funeral. It needs to be a celebration. I get that. We're celebrating today. But I think when I hear that and many times say to that individual, I hope someone cries. I hope I made a difference in someone's life that they will miss me. So as we walk through this time of celebration and grief, this great sadness. We say we feel sad, but it's just a small three-letter word that doesn't express the sadness that we're having, this great sadness. We in the Western world, we really don't have any rituals other than the visitation at the funeral home and then the funeral, three days typically, to grieve and mourn. Our Jewish friends, they have a ritual. It's called Shiva. Shiva means seven in Hebrew. And, and, and Shiva is seven days. That includes the funeral is the first day and six more days. And those who are mourning sit on low chairs or stools and just represents how they're feeling and people come friends come they bring food and they come into the home and when they come they're instructed to say three words just three words and those three words are i am sorry i am sorry and then if the, the mourner wants to to speak they speak. If the mourner wants to sit silently, they sit silently. 
If the mourner has questions, the friends answer. It's not about what's said, it's about being. It's a ministry of being. And Shiva is the first seven days of a year-long ritual of mourning. Did you hear that? A year-long ritual. So where do we turn? We need to learn something from our Jewish brothers and sisters. But where do we turn? We may turn and can turn to Jesus. In Isaiah 53, 4 through 5, we read, Surely he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. I've spoken to many a, per, a person about these verses, and pastors even. And what we miss is he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yes, we understand he bore our sins on the cross and paid the price for our debt. But we miss the fact that he bore our griefs and he carries our sorrows. Jesus told his disciples, Jesus tells us that he will send another comforter to come alongside us, to lead us into all truth, but to comfort us when we need comfort. And so Jesus, Jesus who stood outside the tomb of his best friend, Lazarus, and didn't say a word, Scripture tells us he wept because his tears did all the talking for him. So Jesus sends the Comforter. Jesus sends the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, who then becomes and enters into this time of Shiva and a year-long time of mourning to bring comfort to us. And mourning doesn't end after a year. It goes on. But again, what C.S. Lewis said, the pain I'm experiencing now is the result of the happiness I experienced then. The more happiness, the more pain. So back to the picture that hangs on my wall. Look at it closely. Jesus is the one who practices Shiva. And you'll see in this picture, you see behind Jesus the hand of God reaching out to us. And above Jesus is the dove representing the Holy Spirit. And above the, do the dove is a rainbow, which represents the hope and tr promise for tomorrow. And put yourself in that place of the person that's being hugged with Jesus' arms literally going around you right now and holding you and bringing you comfort healing your sorrow. Paul writes in Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, and regarding the question, friends, that has come up about what happens to those already dead and buried, we don't want you in the dark any longer. First off, you must not carry on over them like people who have nothing to look forward to, as if the grave were the last word since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave, God will most certainly bring back to life those who died in Jesus. And then this, we can tell you with complete confidence, we have the master's word on it, that when the master comes again to get us, those of us who are still alive will not get a jump on the dead and leave them behind. In actual fact, they'll be ahead of us. The master himself will give the command. Archangel thunder, God's trumpet blast. He'll come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise. They'll go first. Then the rest of us who are still alive at the time will be caught up with them into the clouds to meet the master. Oh, who will be walking on air? And then there will be one huge family reunion with the master. There'll be one huge family reunion 
with the master. So assure one another with these words. I have nothing to add to those words. Those words say it all. That's the deal. There'll be one huge celebration. That's the Jesus deal. God bless you.